what you're saying yeah that this is for everyone welcome to grandtastic by the way uh the podcast um being british and yet like the jack that you got john lennon over there someone oh yeah piece of like like i guess wood and like when my my folks they went to spain this is off topic but they went to barcelona dude takes wood he carves out artists like freddie mercury john lennon Uh uh you know um robert plant and like they saw that and i was like a little strange but i'm never against having john lennon in the yeah. apartment and then yeah totally and just thrilled to have you sir and we got even the old yeah. the sheepdog uh nice. so you you already know how excited we are to have you toby thank that's you that's great it's great to uh to do this yeah i'm really really excited yeah i mean shout out um to drew who just mentioned you on the few previous podcasts of it's like amazing i am so grateful to have you guys on here and also plus that you're british that just makes it awesome yeah no it's like a very um because you have british grandpa grandparent was it? It, it yeah so on my mom's side uh uh my grandfather uh well he was scottish mm-hmm. well his his parents but then he they moved over to england when he grew up and you know born and raised in london and then was part of you know joined raf during the war and you know was a lieutenant and pilot instructor and the whole deal so like i have origins over there and i you know met some of the second and third relatives over there when i went over and it's just amazing whole different atmosphere nice which is great and i guess i just wanted like you know because we're talking about the whole british theme um i guess where in england are you from or i guess yeah yeah um so like the southeast so london i kind of i lived in london as like an adult um but i grew up just outside in kind of the suburbs um yeah london's a big city and and it kind of sprawls and spreads out um but i i live before i moved over here i me and my wife we lived in kind of pretty central London I mean not not the absolute center but you know we were pretty pretty close nice and uh I guess since you moved out you know from England to the U.S. I guess have you seen some things that you miss would you say and some things you don't miss being a part in America now yeah it's there's loads I think probably um I think you miss the little things you know um but and every now and again i'll think about something and be like oh i really you know i just get like a pang for something really really silly and i'll be like oh, oh yeah i really miss i can't think i can't think of an example well uh, I, I have well i mean like i remember you post on your story you had like these chips or something oh yeah and like <laughs> like it makes you thought i remember i remember that on your story and i was like that's that's touching because yeah you know it, it's those crisps my dad sent me as like a Christmas kind of care package. Those chips, sorry, I should say chips, not crisps, chips. Um, get the lingo down. And uh, there are like things, it's funny, one of my favorite things is, um, I think you can get it over here, but Cadbury's Dairy Milk Chocolate. Okay, yeah. Um, and you can buy it here, but they're quite, you can buy quite small bars and they're, they're pretty expensive. In England, it's quite cheap. and You can get huge like slabs that <laughs> I just miss being able to to do that yeah. um, but you know there's loads of amazing things about living here for sure um but yeah I think you always miss elements of of home I get that I I totally like just like so a little background I graduated from college or university last year and I was in Arizona and you know born and raised in Sacramento so you know not too far from here and um there's like i get what you're saying because like you know not not as far i mean from not like england to you know san francisco by all any means but like just understanding that like there's certain things like take this for example grass 
I didn't know how much I would appreciate yeah. going to a desert. And, you know, I'm like, where's the grass? And, you know, weird little things like that or how hot it gets. It gets up to like 115, 120 yeah. here, like in the Bay or in Sacramento or even going to Tahoe. Uh, it's, it's not like that at all. So, yeah, it's, I think when I went back to England in August um, for a few weeks and it, it kind of struck me how green it is. I sort of took it for granted. Um, you know, when it's yellow here, everything's so dry and England is just this lush kind of green. Um, everything looks kind of healthy. I don't know the way to it. Yeah, there's not that kind of a decay that comes with drought um yeah oh my god the drought is ridiculous i mean it was you know early like december or whatever you know we had there's a huge storm happening in tahoe and uh you know it was pouring hard here you know a few days in san fran in the bay and it, it was great i was like was looking forward to the rain let's get listening to nostalgic music like mazzy stars or some 90s yeah. band or counting crows or whatever and i was loving those days and then the sun came back and i'm kind of sad because i'm yeah. the weather i know i i think that's one going back to your previous uh one of your previous points um i think one of the things i do miss is rain i really miss oh yeah i really miss rain i think it's easy to miss rain in england i mean you're used you don't miss rain because you have rain probably 50 percent of the year at least so you get kind of fed up with it whereas here I know we're going to get 200 plus days of sunshine so I can kind of revel in like the rainy day that we get every now and again. Yeah. Totally, totally. And I mean, that's a good, that brings up to a good point to like, um, you know, when it does rain here or whenever you get the chance, I feel like, you know, bringing a good old film here, film photography, like black and white shooting mm -hmm. in the rain. That's just that style, especially being in a city. And I'm just thinking right now for your perspective, um, going back to i don't know did, were you shooting film back in uh england no say? not not really I, i've only kind of been doing film since since i've been here um i was yeah very much digital in in england um yeah very much would you say i guess shoot when you did if you did get the chance to shoot film in the rain in england or digital you you you'll probably understand the same like that the shots in the city or that feel with the rain or getting like the reflection of the puddle it's just it creates this like feel and like i don't know i feel like i connect more in that aspect when i see something reflecting in a way yeah i think i remember again going back years ago when i first kind of started sort of doing photography as more of a hobby um and in london of course and one of the kind of there were all these there's always these trends and things that are kind of popular at the time and reflection kind of puddle shots were definitely I definitely kind of snagged my fair share of like the kind of cliche puddle reflection shots for sure they're great man they're great yeah, I mean, they look they look amazing you know um, and I didn't I mean at the time I didn't think everyone else you know I'm not one of these people that kind of I jump on bandwagons and I think it's fair enough but um it's yeah totally fine because when i got here and like you know started shooting film per se like last summer and everything first thing i took the picture was the golden gate bridge and then yep. i started like looking at film people or people i met here everyone takes the picture with their film with the gold or just a different angle of where you're getting yeah. or alcatraz or and it's like it's normal you know and it's i think the the one thing about that is that how people have like how they see things are different from everyone. So maybe they can get a certain angle that you would have never gotten. And I think that's cool. You might see a, the same picture a thousand times, but each time you see it, it's a little bit different, which you can appreciate in some aspects. Yeah, I think that's kind of, I think it, living around here, we're kind of at a bit of a disadvantage because it's so heavily photographed. There's so many places like the Golden Gate Bridge and there's loads of others that, you see time and time again and it is challenging to find like a unique aspect um so yeah i've always kind of been pretty i try not to be too hard on myself if i don't find that unique kind of angle um i think you know 
just can't you can't do it every time but yeah if you can it's amazing like it's every now and again i'll see i'll see a shot and i'll be like damn like where where did you get that I, I don't know that i don't know where you would have picked that up and you know people are are industrious when when they want to be oh yeah i think sometimes you're just in the moment and that's something um i've like oh time just from doing this like in the beginning i I was just shooting. I was just being a, you know, young man's game, whatever you want. I'm not that old, but you get the idea. And like, like just shooting, you had a film camera. It was so cool. You shoot and then you wait and then you're so excited to see it. And the point I'm making here is like after you do it for a while and like sometimes when you're just walking and like all of a sudden you see this cool angle, you know, it just, it just happens, you know? And I think that's the great thing you know, throwing in life into all this, uh, is yeah. that you, like being out there is the, like, you got to buy Like you're not going to win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket and you got to be out there and the rest kind of takes care of itself. I think, um, yeah. I like many, many years ago, one of my many kind of different hats that I tried wearing in photography was street photography. And, um, I was never very good. I, I was rubbish actually, but, one of the like there are and there are a few um particularly in the uk street photographers who are amazing and that work i really really love and they would always get these they seem like kind of one in a million coincidences you know these chance encounters with people where like a person's trousers match the color of some you know you know what i mean these kind of one-offs and i just always thought how did you how did you do that like how does that happen? And I and I think it's just they spend hours and hours and every day out there with a camera, and probably ninety percent of the time, not a lot happens. And then the other ten percent, you you know, you find these kind of amazing compositions. Oh yeah, I mean that's something like I, because um, like I don't know what type of photography. I think it's like I personally do. I just like to shoot. I think like you say, maybe street streets a very interesting thing. Um, just because like you have to really kind of get in someone's face or like you just got to get out you got to get out of your comfort zone that's basically what it is and yeah. um and I'm okay doing that you know sometimes just because I'll just act like a tourist and be like thank you you know just kind of wave and keep on going and uh but sometimes it's it doesn't work like that like I take some shots down by the mission because I I'm in grad school for music and stuff so I'll just bring the camera and stuff I remember I got this one shot or like I was learning this technique I was you know YouTube amazing help showing you it's like a technique where you have your camera loaded your film shot you have it right here you just kind of pretend you're walking in front of someone and you take the picture like oh sorry but you you know just right there and I it worked like I did I think like a few times only out of like those times only one or two worked the mm -hmm. other times I did it with this one man he did not appreciate it. he was just like cussing me almost like kind of want to push me out of the way he's like watch where you're going blah 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 and I was like oh my god this yeah. man this was like like too much but at the same time I got a thrill out of it I was like, yeah yeah uh, was so <laughs> I I'm way too polite and timid to ever have been a very good um street photographer I think I I think I had maybe one moment when someone confronted me um, and I felt really embarrassed uh, and it wasn't even a good shot. It was like a rubbish, nothing shot. And I kind of showed him, I, I deleted it. And I think I went straight home with my tail between my legs. And, oh man, no, yeah. I mean, but, but, but we all have those like, like days, like, don't get me wrong. Like half of when I tried that, like, you know, technique you could say, usually they're like, what did you do? Do you take a photo, blah, blah, blah. And like, what I shoot is like an M6. Like, mm -hmm. so lovely that it's quiet. It doesn't have to make a little shutter, like to yeah. or ch like, so people can really, and like, I was in the same shoes. Like one guy's like, all right, delete that photo. And so I just pretended I clicked the, you know, reverse. And I was like, all right, it's deleted. And then, all right, thank you. Ha, that's clever. That's, and I, I like that. And I just, on, I didn't reverse anything. I just put it on reverse. And then yeah, yeah. he thought I like, I mean, it's film, man. I don't know what you want me to delete. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I have to destroy the whole role here. And that's like, yeah, you're not going to do that. No, especially, no. especially with prices going up, you know, exactly. That is, that is, yeah, I think, and that's like another thing like this, ever since like January 1st, 
the new year and stuff, I've been more, you could say, I guess, conservative shooting mm-hmm. film. I just like haven't, I wouldn't say I've been not inspired. I'm just been, I guess, you know, cause now the film is so expensive. It's like, is it worth taking this shot? You know yeah. what I mean? And I don't know if, if you've been feeling the same lately, like being careful what you shoot, but like, mm-hmm. I don't know, shoot, bu- buying film. And then I'm trying to right now is also buy my own, like, you know, scanner, trying to develop on my own. Mm-hmm. Just I feel like that's the best way, long way, just to save money. And everything's yeah. expensive, man. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've, I've always been quite kind of, uh, um, tried not to be too conservative with film and just kind of enjoy it for what it is. But the the price hike this year has really bit pretty hard and um you know i went out the other night on saturday and you know i'd usually shoot maybe i don't know three or four rolls perhaps um i think i managed not even two and i thought you know maybe this is kind of where i need to to be maybe i can't afford to shoot just like three or four rolls you know in an hour Mm -hmm. um yeah, I've tried to not be too, like, just kind of, if I'm feeling it, just kind of let it flow and worry about the consequences later. But yeah, the prices now are so, they feel so crazy. It, it, um, it really is. Yeah. And there's no, like, I've always been quite, had like philosophical views about it. And I you sort of think, though, there are ways you can kind of cut costs you know, if you do this. Okay. You know, try, you know, but now it's just like all film is expensive, even like uh, like Kodak Ektar, which is was always kind of the the cheaper, or certainly on 120 film was always like the cheapest pro pack you could buy, color negative. Um, and now that's that's like I think it's nearly 50 bucks or something for a pack. It, um, it's crazy. It's like that can like I mean. If you have a car or whatever, that can pay for gas at that, mm-hmm. like 50 bucks. It's like, you got to choose out here. And it's, I don't know. It's been like, I, I, I'm pretty like, I choose creativity over like, you know, money all any day, but mm-hmm. like lately it's been hard and it's like, um, it's hard for my shots, but lately I've been, I've been getting back into it, you know, just was in Tahoe. Beautiful. It's got some good shots. I think I use only like a roll and a half. Mm-hmm. I still have the other it's in the camera and, um yeah i don't know it's been very interesting and i was actually having this car i was texting uh drew earlier today about mm-hmm. like about wondering is it worth buying a half frame camera because you get 72 shots because mm-hmm. you know it's, and like you know there was a good point he made like yeah you get the shots but like they're not sharp and like i'm all about sharpness mm-hmm. in my like shots and it's like you saving film we get more shots but is it worth the not the quality i guess not yeah the quality i think those half frame cameras are really fun they look really fun i never used one but i think they they feel more of a novelty yeah item to me I, I feel like it's for someone who just like you're, you're doing it fun you know like those like point and shoot cameras you buy like at a store and mm-hmm. then you just shoot and then you turn it it's like kind of like that people use or whatever and i think it's uh that's what it's main for not like if you actually want to get high quality photos yeah exactly but i've seen people use them like really effectively but you have to i think to do it well there's a real process to it because you need to kind of you want to kind of match up two frames Mm. that work well together yes you Um, have to be very creative with it yeah exactly which is important but like let's just like so what is i guess your go-to camera what are you shooting 35 120 yeah uh, mostly 120 um i have a pentax 6 7 beautiful uh which i've had for about a year um and yeah i love it i i got one um because i a friend of mine sebastian uh who's kind of my other half in photography uh at seb a rod i'll give him a shout out um Heck yeah. And uh, he let me borrow his Pentax uh, 672 um, last last January. And I just was just like, I, yeah, this is just the most beautiful, um, high functioning film camera I've ever used. But I couldn't quite stretch to the 672. They're, 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 yeah. they're expensive. So I got a 6.7 and, and it's, it, you know, it serves my needs 
really, That's really well. Um, and I don't really shoot much 35 millimeter at all now. Um, every now and again, but I, I'm mostly kind of mostly kind of medium. That's, that that's great honestly and yeah i mean in general like the medium formats and like you know some 35 like they're expensive it's like it's it's truly an investment i like <laughs> on one of them on the other podcast like yeah with drew and then i had one with another guy uh hi may shout out to him <laughs> um great photographer from uh, vancouver like i was telling him like yeah, I had to use half my rent money for my apartment for this kid, for the for the yeah. episode. and I was like, oh my god, this is this is not wise at all. I mean, but, you have to think of it as like an investment because you know that they're only going to probably only going to go up in price. Well, they don't lose value. That's no. the thing; they just keep going up. So, and it's I mean, I don't think I ever would sell. It's like the only camera I use now. I mean, I had an AE one. Mm -hmm. I don't know something about the range finders. I just I like them. I like this with like, it's quiet, it's portable. Mm -hmm. and it just works for me, you know, yeah. never shot 120, but 120 is definitely maybe it's just, it's so big, you know, and yeah, I, it is big. I, my kind of gateway into medium format was a Mamiya RB67. Okay. Uh, because again, it was like the budget, it fitted the budget that I wanted to spend. And you know, that thing is just a slab. It's just yeah. a box and it's heavy. Um, and don't get me wrong, great camera. Mm -hmm. I've taken some shots on it that I really am very proud of. But the Pentax 6.7, and the Pentax 6.7 is a brick in itself. It's it's super heavy, but at least you can put it around your neck okay. easily, you know. And and it may it's made me a little bit more mobile because um, I'm not like cradling. Mm -hmm. a camera like a baby i can at least put it over my shoulder and kind of walk walk yeah with it. you don't it's want a any, heavy beast you don't want any neck pain or anything like that from no there. exactly but you know it's like unless you want to shell out for a mamiya seven or you know like a makina yeah. six seven they're really expensive like most medium formats or well, most six seven um you know six by seven medium formats are just beasts heavy beasts they, they really i mean i never i hold one myself i've seen them like at stores or i have mm -hmm. a friend who i'm just like i mean this is just a workout out of itself like if you yeah. want to like you can shoot work out get a whole thing with it which is kind of interesting or funny but yeah i think you know 120 is pretty amazing i think it's cool um I never get the chance i'll definitely try to go that way but I guess, you know, you were saying earlier, like you first started with digital mm -hmm. and now you just kind of feel, I mean, what was the, or no, let's even go back farther. Like, like what got you into photography in general, the big, and then we can work our way. Like work away uh, back, go back to a year dot where, yeah. I don't know. I've, I've always, I'm not a particularly artistic person. I can't draw, I can't sculpt. Um but I've always had this kind of, as long as I can almost remember, I've had this interest in, like, in, in photography or in cameras, even going back to being like a kid. Um, and I sort of been interested. And then I think I got my first DSLR probably like 10 years ago or something. Um, and, you know, I was just like doing what most people do, kind of take it on holiday and vacation. Um, and kind of use it to for like not not taking anything particularly remarkable um but then instagram kind of picked up and i kind of got into instagram a bit more and and i it was probably coming here to the us for the first time about um six years or so ago and like the check like the landscape here is so incredible it's so different to the uk and I think that was what really kind of inspired me initially to start like taking photos and then like sharing them with people and not just have them like sit on my computer. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of when like the Edgewood Edition thing was born. Um, but it was really here. I, I honestly think if I were to go back, it was really coming here as a visitor. Yeah, the first couple of times, you know, we, we went obviously we were here like in the bay area because that's where my wife's from originally but we went down to the desert and joshua tree and that landscape it just really inspired me to like take more photos so i went back to london and bought a new camera and i mean the landscape's totally different um but i definitely kind of 
fell into the groove with like urban architecture kind of I don't really know how to describe it kind of moody um moody stuff um and I kind of did that for a few years and it kind of ebbed and flowed a little bit uh I had periods where I wasn't really feeling creative and kind of tried a few different things and film kind of came from a period where I kind of stopped totally I we were getting ready to move here we had a lot of things going on in life and I, I didn't touch my camera for months and months and months um and I, I don't know what triggered it but something kind of made me decide I'm gonna sell my like digital setup and buy a film camera and when we move to California, I'm going to start taking photos on film. And mm. I, and I kind of, I did, I mean, it was a bit of a slow burn initially because I, you know, I wasn't really kind of feeling as creative at the time as I probably am now, but yeah, I, I kind of started and that was two years ago and I've kind of never looked, never looked back. That's amazing. And I think, you know, it, it, it comes and goes, I think anything like, um and also i think you're definitely creative you're definitely a creative man like like your shots are beautiful i just want to say you. that I, I i like i admire that's your kind like i yeah i mean like i told you when i first hit you up like like you inspire me then i i mean that like like you do like all the people who have whoever who does film and who i've met or will meet like probably will inspire me because it's creative you see another outlet like mm -hmm. your, your eyes or what you capture and um and i think like you were saying about how you weren't shooting for a while. I think, you know, in that creative process, um, there's time for you just got to reset, you know, you got to, um, I don't know. It's hard because like I, I do music. So like for me, mm -hmm. like I, for me to reset, I got to live life a little and then whatever yeah. it's, like a, it's like love or heartbreak or something great, take the guitar or piano, boom, there you go. Uh, film, I guess you could kind of use it in the same way. And like, I guess, maybe go on like a vacation or a, something you're just traveling or whatever it is you have it with you you see something that you just want to capture which yeah is, which is great and or you want to like the reason like why I started was saw my grandfather's uh like a scrapbook of when he was in the war and everything and just these amazing photos and there's one like he's in a spitfire and like I don't know how he was doing this like like whatever but he got the photo of his like colleague in the other spitfire that's amazing he, and it's like this photo maybe i'll post it on my uh yeah yeah i'd love to see that um and it was just like and it was just i don't know i it, it blows my mind black and white the whole deal yeah uh, and it was just a great picture and like you could you feel this pride i don't know what it is that like i because my mom always tells me a story this like this was his favorite photo he was so proud of it or whatever i guess flying and shooting it's like don't do that in the yeah little not, yeah like that's such a unique situation like how amazing to yeah. capture that it really is and like take uh even like your family or something or like at least my family like the reason why now is, is back over here i don't know if you can see like there's little books or whatever they're like my mm -hmm. scrapbook so mm -hmm. whatever photos i take and if i think they're good or they're meaningful i'll you know print them out or whatever and then mm -hmm make the scrapbook and then someday when i have kids or whatever they can look back of grant's life being in san francisco or wherever i'll end up you know so yeah we don't print photos enough now um and it's like since we've been here like with covid we've had not so much now but you know there was a period where we had lots of time on our hands and mm -hmm. i remember going through of my in-laws my wife's mum and dad have boxes of you know photographs nice. over the years and some of them are you know probably 40 years old you know old or whatever and it's amazing to see there's something about you know we we see so many photos on our camera on our phones or whatever digitally that they almost have more meaning when you have them in front of you it's and it's you an know. artifact that's yeah. really it. it's like vinyl um it's you know you have all these stream songs but with vinyl i mean you get to open it you get to see the covers you get to read what it's about the lyrics i mean yeah. like take one of the like i want to say 
they're one of the greatest bands, the Beatles. Like you look at Sgt. Pepper, love that album. You get to see all like the, you know, the costumes they're wearing and the and like the story behind it. Uh, it's it's amazing. You're holding it when you hold something like that. It's there forever. Versus on the cloud. Yeah. We'll say. Yeah. You definitely. You know, you, you there's something you can stare at a photograph in your hands for a lot longer than you're probably likely to stare at something on your phone. I think. Oh yeah. And it's just like, I don't know, it's, it's, you know, scrapbook is right there. Pull it up. If you have some time, look through it or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great. And yeah, I don't know. Something about film photography and also how it comes out, you know, um, I feel like with film photography, two things, I guess, one, it teaches how to be patient because with digital, you shoot, you can look at it right away. Um, If you don't like it, delete it, retake it, film, you Mm -hmm. gotta like, you hope it's going to come out well. And, uh, you know, it makes you more patient and waiting for your shot or whatever. Yeah, it's not, you haven't got that instant kind of gratification, but I think it's worthwhile kind of in the end. Definitely, definitely, 100%. And you were saying um, about how your wife is from San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah, she she grew up um, in Marin County where we live. Um, so yeah, yeah, she moved to London. She, her mu- Her mom's English. Nice. Um, and because of that, she was able to move to the UK to work. And that's where we met. And yeah, we nice, man. lived in the UK, in London for, uh, I don't know, seven years, I think. And okay. Eventually, kind of, when we got married, we decided we'd try life out here. Um, and then COVID happened and had a child and stuff. So it's been a crazy couple of years. Yeah, as, man. As to be said. Yeah, for real. I mean, graduation on the marriage and the child. I don't know, like, like it's been, (laughs) might be late to that. Congratulations. But, you know, anyways, congrats. You know, that's amazing. And um, does she shoot film? Uh, My wife? Yeah. She's a really good photographer, actually. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that if she was in the the room, but uh, she, she would tell you she was probably into photography before I was, I think. Okay. Um. And she has she has a few cameras, but she doesn't shoot. And she, you know, she's she's an iPhone kind of photographer right. nowadays. But yeah, she's a she's a good photographer. But yeah, awesome. we've never, uh, not intentionally, but I always find that it. I find it hard. I feel guilty if we go out together and I've got my camera and I'm shooting, trying to do my thing, and I feel like I'm kind of um, not fully engaged with family time so i try and kind of separate it Um, it's literally a balance that's what it is yeah i mean not always there are times when we will go out and i'll have my cameras and we kind of find the balance but Mm -hmm. you know i feel that sometimes i'm like oh i just want to go i'm just gonna go over there and yeah (laughs) you know it's like we've only got like you know especially having a a one-year-old now we're always on like borrowed time when we go out because it's like we've got to get naps in and stuff so there's less time for me to like Mm. you know line up endless compositions of things um without feeling a little bit uh guilty so i try and kind of find time when i can go off on my own or meet up with other photographers and i kind of can just do that and like have you know two hours of of just kind of focusing on on photography Um, yeah i think you gotta like you know a balance in a way of like you, you gotta spend family and then work and then your free time you know toby's free time we gotta want to shoot some you know photos go for it if you want to i don't know watch cricket or whatever yeah, that's you right. that you know like i mean yeah luckily a lot of what i shoot nowadays are places that my wife likes to go to as well so it kind of often is the case that she's pretty sympathetic and allows me my yeah kind of photography while we're on the hikes and things nice that's awesome that's great to hear and honestly yeah i've been well this is like i guess like i guess a question would you say moving to america and then living in you know england london uh do you feel like because someone was telling me this a while back maybe maybe england's a little bit different uh is that would you say it's 
slower. Like I feel like in America, everything's fast paced, everything's happening. And so I'm saying in Europe, it's like relaxed, slow back, but also they're, they're, they, they live in Italy. So it's a little, I feel like a little different. Yeah. I don't know. I, th I think, I think living in a city like London gives you a slightly kind of skewed reference point. Um, because London definitely feels very like boom, you know. Yeah, that's um, that, that, that's why I was like a little. Yeah, but I think you know, like commute. I commuted in London for years, and it just always felt kind of crazy. And you kind of got, I got back in the house after like coming back from work, and you're kind of like, "Phew, I'm glad that's over." That was intense. Or like the worst one was whenever we'd come back from vacation and we'd fly in and. We'd have to go from the airport to our apartment, which yeah. was kind of they were usually it was a journey across town, and mm. I always hated it. I always got really grumpy because it was just too. You've been on holiday, you've been in Europe or wherever, and you had a great time, and it's been super relaxing. You know, beers at lunchtime, whatever, mm. lovely weather, and you come back to London and it's grey everyone's like pissed off um you're getting in your way and i'm getting in their way and it's just like man i hate this yeah um i feel like life here is in again we live in marin we don't live in san francisco so you know it's it's probably a little um probably a little little quieter um you know i don't i do like a a commute in a car now not on foot um and it feels a bit more relaxed but That's yeah i mean it's still i guess it's still america and it's kind of a everything's kind of bigger and better here compared to uh, compared to the uk i think i well yeah i mean i mean well i don't i mean i mean born and raised here america you know california it's been great and i knew what you were feeling about growing up sacramento I go international so you have to drive all the way to San Francisco you have to come back and then get the you know goddamn car and then maybe you don't know where you parked and yeah. then mom is yelling at my dad He's like how are you idiot how did you blah 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 we finally get it drive us back and yeah totally understand that and yeah America it's huge and there's definitely pros for sure living here but I always feel like like this is like a, I was having another discussion with a friend was like after this year um because what I'm here for is like audio engineering for music mm -hmm. and stuff is that you can do music anywhere. And like another friend of mine uh, lives in like Paris and like, she's like from America, but just living there doing her thing. And I feel like it's so important to travel and see different parts of the world and figure it out because I don't know, I don't want to be stuck in the system, man, not to sound like a hippie or yeah. something like that, but. <laughs> I know what you mean. I feel very lucky. And that's one thing, again, I miss you know, now we've you mentioned it earlier. I couldn't come up with any anything that I missed about living in the UK, but you know, having that access to Europe is incredible. Um, yeah, but you don't need a passport. I learned like you could just there's like a European. I forget what it's called, but amazing. Yeah, it, it's it it's. I feel very lucky that for years I've had that um, kind of access to. You know, we've. I, my wife would tell you, and I probably agree. We didn't utilize it enough when we were there probably but um being here like you know we've been back to england once in the last couple of years and you know no time to travel europe let you know barely any time to see enough people that we want to in england so i feel very lucky that i've i've had at least some experience with like seeing france and spain yeah and well i was literally next question was like favorite places in europe or like I mean, have you shot like film in Europe, would you say? No, I, that's kind of a bit of a regret. Um, so I've definitely not shot film in Europe. Um, I'd love to. Yeah, on the bucket. Um, it's on the bucket <laughs> list. Um, I mean, photography wise, I feel like the only place I've really done like proper photography in Europe is Paris, which nice. is a like great city. I really like Paris, but usually when we've gone other places it's been like just my my phone and i've i've probably taken photographs on my phone that i'm really proud of it's yeah. a great tool um you know, we've been you know like places in spain and stuff but there's so much to kind of 
see but usually you're kind of you know it's between going to the beach and things so it's not always like a great environment to do photography one of my big regrets i think we um before we moved over here we went to morocco which isn't europe it's not but i know but on the um, populace on the yeah populace. I, How is that? we went to, we only went to marrakesh we didn't travel but we were there for i think three nights or four nights and it was amazing yeah um it's just one of the funnest places super intense like it's very full-on but you know it's so different to europe when that seems obvious of course it is but it's yeah. i'd never been anywhere like it um yeah. and i wish that i had i don't think i even had a i think i had an old point and shoot camera um and i bought that with me i didn't have another film camera at the time so I didn't, you know, I shot maybe a roll or two of film, not very good. I didn't really know what I was doing, but like, there's so many, there would have been so many opportunities to like, oh yeah, really go to town there. Like, it's just a very photogenic place. And a, um, I'm not like an amazingly well-traveled person. Like I've, I've seen parts of Europe, obviously that like I've come to the US a, a bit over the years and now obviously live here. But um, like culturally, it's so so eye opening. It's so different to anything that I've experienced. Um, yeah, you know, someone that's basically only travelled in the Western world. Um, no, definitely. I I I can kind of relate because, like, well, I didn't go to Morocco, but last summer I went to Kenya, and um, you know, going to Nairobi for a few days, and then going out, you know down to where the Maasai is and everything and, you know, being with the villagers, like, and like, like helping and then doing a safari. It was, it was breathtaking, especially, um, and at that point I had like, I had the AE one, but I had the program. So mm -hmm. like some of the shots, like we're just slapping program, not going to mess with it. Don't know what I'm doing here. Gonna, and then some, I, I was trying to learn, you know, of course the program ones came out a lot better, but, uh, uh yeah. That's always the way, but then that like, you, know, you don't learn. Right? Yeah, that's, so and that's, like, that's the problem. And but um, you know, then after a while, then living here or whatever, I just started turning off program, gotta learn. So, but the point like to that story was was yeah, it was a totally different cultural experience of like seeing the villages and like seeing what how they dress and like their culture and like being surrounded and seeing like their views that you probably won't see like in the western world so it was very eye-opening and very appreciative of like what they're doing and yeah i would oh my god love to go back or anywhere in africa i feel yeah. like it would just it's just amazing like the congo on the bucket list don't know how safe that is but you know worth it yeah worth i it. mean it's all part of life's rich tapestry right yeah it, it really is like it, it comes down to it you just gotta live life live simply like my shirt says you gotta live simply man you live gotta, like, what is it live laugh live, love live uh, love laugh uh, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> you already know and it's the dude he's like took his clothes off and he's just no, hanging in a tree so yeah, yeah perfect. Shout, out, shout out to patagonia for their shirt uh, <laughs> but yeah i think traveling is great and it's it, it it basically comes down to this like you gotta like of course have the fun so it's like this is your vacation, whatnot, unless you can somehow take this opportunity or creativity and turn it into a brand or whatever. But then I feel like when you turn it into like a job or whatever it becomes, it's, it's not fun or it becomes stressful in a way. It, I don't know. Would you agree to that per se? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I was thinking when we were talking just then about traveling and I know I was kind of kind of sad that I'd never taken a camera with me to these places particularly but in a way I'm kind of grateful for that because I just enjoyed being there yeah um I wasn't burdened you know burdened by feeling like I had to get money shots all the oh, yeah. all the time um I don't know I, I've always um I think there is something not being a you know not making any money from photography and just doing it as a hobby there is something 
I'd imagine quite freeing about it. Um, although I've got nothing to compare that to, but um, you know, there's no there's kind of no pressure, but at the same time, it's not self-funding. It's you know, it's not self-funded, so it's yeah. like a huge cost, um, particularly with film. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel I guess some a part of me would love to be a professional photographer, but yeah i think um, it, i mean it's like it's never say never you know it, it, it can happen you know like like you never you should never give up on your dreams that's what i'm saying like you know have you should like be smart about it. you know have a job that can pay the bills and do the photography on the side and of course if somehow it does take off then by all means then do that of course but yeah i think it's definitely interesting and you made a good point about how you said like you're living in the moment. You don't always need to take a photo. You know, sometimes you maybe have your camera. It's like, I just want to be with this moment and I don't need to take a photo and let everyone else see. It just can be me in the moment or like me in the moment, the people around you. And I think yeah. that's a huge thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm saying that in the after event and tr probably trying to put a, <laughs> a, a, a silver lining on it. But I think there is something to be said. And um, I went I met a few years ago, we went to Spain to an island called Menorca, which we used to go to. It's a small island, just, um, it's a Balearic island, I want to say, but I don't know, I could be wrong. It's near Ibiza and uh, we, we went, it's a quiet island, you know, it's, it's very relaxed. And, you know, I, I took loads of photos that I really love on my, on my phone. Yes. Um, and I, and they just came from like walking around and just seeing things and be like, oh, that, I don't know if I would have seen them if I had my camera. I feel like I would have been kind of, would have had these kind of blinkers on and I wouldn't have seen like some of the kind of chance things. You know, we were talking about like street photographers and like those chance encounters. And I feel like not having a camera probably opened those up a little bit more on, on some level. Oh yeah, I, I think it's just, it, it's, it just depends like, you know, all right. I don't know, like that, that idea or thought you put into my mind, it's like with the camera or without the camera, it's you're going to have a different experience. I think that's what it is because you, your objective or whatever you're doing or, or consciously, you know, um, it's going to create a different outcome, I guess. And it's 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 interesting for sure. Definitely. I mean, but nowadays I just carry the camera wherever I'm going, no matter what, like because yeah. you never want to miss whatever you're exactly. Shot. And I'm I'm pretty much the same. So yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't take it to the supermarket, but otherwise it's usually <laughs> somewhere. I, funny that you said that literally two weeks ago, I took it to like, you know, like the Safeway, whatever. And, you know, I felt like, you know, what, maybe I, this could be street photography. Someone picking up like lettuce or something, took the photo. She looked at me. She was not happy no. at all. She just, she was there. She was in Safeway. She just she, was, you know, minding her own business. And, and then this dude just was like, <laughs> The camera taking like at first she like I think was like who is this creep what the fuck and I was like no I was like no no like I just you know I just thought it was interesting how you're grabbing I don't know I was just trying to get out of it like lettuce yeah. or something yeah. Yeah. I'm you know I you see my photography it's not really very people based most of the time mm -hmm. um but I'd like to have people kind of at times um and yeah i'm always even with my style of photography I, I always and usually that means that there's someone like way off in the distance yeah. or something i always feel you know like, oh what if they they're gonna see me and they think it's when my camera like the shutter goes down and it's like this almighty <laughs> clap i was gonna um, literally say like you know and so it's pretty I, big yeah. you can't really miss looking at it like <laughs> and i think yeah i think and i guess there's good and bads that good and bad size to that right like it's a big camera people kind of probably think oh he's not like doing anything too weird because he's got like this obvious camera it's so huge he's probably like a legit kind of guy but mm. yeah I, I i'm always if, I, if there's a per, like someone in my frame i'm always a little bit like is this going to be the time that someone comes up to me and demands yeah. that i kind of like i don't know throw my camera on the ground or open up the back of the camera or something just do like a little i don't know if on medium format if there's like a reverse i'm assuming there must be like a reverse thing like an r or something uh, uh 
No, because he wind it on to the other spools. So oh, you just, you just, okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe to, maybe it's draw. It's definitely a button I can like wiggle or something. Yeah, exactly. Maybe anything. you just put a little R and be like, or a, a D for delete or something like, all right, it's deleted. And then I feel, I feel like just saying to the person like, yeah, I took a picture of you. Like, you know, what do you think I'm going to do with it? Like, it, you know, it's. You can I'm follow gonna, me. Like, you can yeah, see you have follow me. I'll, I'll tag you in it on Instagram. I think people are so, I understand to some point, like I'm not particularly cautious with my image and maybe that becomes like comes from being of like being an of an older millennial but a millennial nevertheless I feel like if someone took my photo on the street I probably wouldn't care like I wouldn't be too bothered as long as it was just me like you know yeah like family members maybe I'd be a bit more a bit more cautious but I I, I struggle to sympathize with people that get really upset about it. And I don't know why, maybe that's on me, but um, like that photo that I mentioned, that guy in London that confronted yeah. me that I took, like, I feel like saying to him, it's a, it's a lousy photo. Like you're yeah. in it you're totally incidentally. I feel like you should um, be honored in a way that someone would wait. Like, like this is how I see it. Like you should be honored. Do you understand how much film costs? Like I just took a yeah, shot yeah, of, exactly. of, of you. Like be that's honored. A, that's, um, that's, uh, that's over a dollar that I've just spent on. Yeah, it's funny. I, I don't really... I try and be sympathetic. I I can't because I don't necessarily have the same view. So it is more difficult. Having said that, again, I'm still not going to go shoving my camera in yeah. someone's face because for me, with my personality, it's not worth the stress that that yeah. causes. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really... Like even posting, like, I sort of think, oh, I've taken a picture of someone's car. Like, is that bad? Are they going to get annoyed that their cars in a photograph i don't i don't think so i i really i think i think also like like the biggest thing like with street photography that i've like learned is like sometimes we just get in our heads and like like they're believe me there's gonna be people who are gonna like be mad or they'll swear at you but then again i think about that's just life that's just people like that's just there's just people always going to be yelling, whatever, especially people here in San Francisco or wherever you're shooting. Mm -hmm. It's like, I've got to the point where if I'm just going to take the photo. I'm going to take the photo. And I, if someone calls me out on me, I'll be like, sorry, whatever. And then just keep on moving because like, where are the odds at the end of the day, you're ever going to see them again. If you do, well, I don't know what to say to you, sir. I, yeah. I'm so sorry. I, yeah. I remember I was out with a couple of, friends in the city i think it must have been last summer um sebastian i've already i won't shout him out again because he'll get a big head i've got to get him on here now uh, you should uh, he'd be really interested and han um who's at han farm nice is, is her instagram and she's uh, a bit of a legend a film legend um and we were out there yeah it must have been nearly a year ago and he took a picture of someone's house um totally innocently and this lady like came out of the front door i think she was in a he'll correct me on this i think she might have been in like a nightingale or something but um okay. and like i don't think i don't think she quite tra chased us down the street but we made a hasty exit i think she was a bit pissed off that we that one of us had pointed our camera at her uh her front room or something yeah it's, i don't know it's just interesting that people like like at first, like, you know, if you don't, under, I guess, I guess this is just how it is. It's just your mindset. I guess if you don't understand or how film photographers, photographers in general, how they think, then yeah, you might be thinking like, why are they taking my picture? But then again, maybe you should think of like, I might be like, this is paparazzi. So you're famous. Someone thinks you have something amazing happening. That's yeah. how you should be. I, overall, you should be honored that yeah. someone's willing to use their film to shoot. And, and it's never, ever like very rarely at least is it like this person looks like bad it's like and it's never in my experience it's never actually about the person mm. like it's very rarely like this person looks this way mm. it's incidental the person is kind of they're there and you know they're doing something it might just be the fact that they're walking across a scene it but it could be anybody it's nothing to do with you and how you look it's just you just happen to be there 
Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what basically what it is. And I, and I guess like a thought I always was wondering, it's like, you see certain people, like they, they stick with the style, you know, like you say, you know, street photography or um, I don't know, I guess like buildings or whatever, whatever it is. Like, do you think like you have to stick with one thing or can you just be a person who just wants to shoot? Cause I, I hear so many different views on this. Like you should stick with, if you find something you're good at, stick with it or try everything. Yeah. I think that it's, I think it's hard to transition. I think that's probably why more people don't do it. Oh, it's hard to be good at every discipline of photography probably. And I, I also think probably on some level, we are all, well, those of us who use social media yeah. to like get our work out there, particularly Instagram, I think we are all kind of held back a little bit by the something that I find, and I think it's fairly true of most people, that if I posted something that was a bit out of the ordinary, it wouldn't get the same reception that I may be used to in some of my other work. And I think that probably is always at the back of my mind, maybe, um, oh, and maybe other photographers' minds too. Um, but I think the reality is it's quite difficult to be a good landscape photographer and also be a really good street photographer or be a good um, nature photographer or whatever. Um, and I can't think, like, if I think about it, I can't think of many photographers that I know of who do kind of shoot well, at least several different disciplines. Uh, and that's not a critique of mm -hmm. anyone and saying that they're better than anyone else. But um, I think most of us find kind of a lane that we feel comfortable in and just go for it um, because it's, it takes a long time to feel like you're getting anywhere. Like when you take up a new hobby, the initial period, there's quite steep kind of growth and you feel like, wow, I'm getting good really quick. And then you kind of hit that intermediate area where suddenly it's like walking through mud and it feels a lot harder to make progress. And, and I think, um, it takes months and months and months and maybe years to get kind of beyond that and feel like you've really mastered the, a discipline of photography. So to like go and do it, try and master another discipline on top of that seems like a really, really big task. That's kind of my opinion. Um, but, and I think also it's access as well, like where I live, mm -hmm. um, I try and get into the city to like, and I used to get into the city a lot more don't I don't get in there very much nowadays to shoot different things so most of what I shoot is around here where I live um and I, I've kind of settled into this kind of yeah I just I'm kind of a I don't know what how I would describe my photography but kind of a landscape fusion type deal I don't really know um Whereas if I lived in the city, I'd be doing a lot more kind of architecture type things. Maybe maybe I would do a bit of street photography pretty badly, probably, but I'd maybe give it a go. Yeah, man. I well, I think well, I think the street photography will be beautiful. I'm just gonna point that out. You know, I think it would. You, you, I mean, you, you, first of all, like you said, the big camera, it's totally fine. That's right. Yeah. What What do you expect with the Leica, whatever? You kind of quiet. You're just like this. It's a little sketchy. But I'm a nice man. I try to look like. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. whatever. I'm sure you don't. I'm sure when you do it, it doesn't look as sketchy as you think it does. No, it man. Fun. I mean, I'm wearing the colorful whatever. Like I don't know where it is. A colorful, you know, pin jacket, whatever, with all my pins and bell bottoms and whatever you want to go with. And uh, uh, main point is, yeah, I think it come out whatever. But I think you made the point where like, and also people who listen to this are like musicians or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the part that will click for sure is like the style. Like if you find like your niche or your style, let's take psychedelic rock. Like if you realize that's what your fans like, you're, you're going to keep, you know, reproducing that type of style mm -hmm. because you know, more and more people are going to come. And I think that's a huge thing. And I think that separates like 
and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, like amateurs and like professionals in a way, you know, like you realize, all right, this is working for me. Look who's coming and viewing my page and following mm -hmm. and, you know, hitting me up and asking me questions on, and it's, uh, it's great. But it, at the same time, if you also have that passion, like, yeah, I love this stuff, but also maybe I want to shoot a car or maybe mm -hmm. I want to do a beach landscape. It's like, what's the balance of like, do I care what these people are going to think? It's like, will I lose followers or do I'm going to take this because this creates happiness? And maybe you take it and you just never post it. Yeah. And I think that's true. I, I'm i still thinking like of photographers who do kind of do a bit of everything. Yeah. Um, and it's it's quite difficult. Um, the, one, the one that springs to mind, and this is like an obvious... Mm -hmm. uh, an obvious choice yeah, i think he's become quite a divisive figure but like someone like joe greer yeah uh, yeah literally who, who, who you know he, he he shoots a lot of street photography but also you know he'll throw in landscapes and a bit of kind of more urban architecture type stuff um i guess if you've got six hundred thousand followers it's much easier to 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 do that maybe it feels more more um feels less kind of uh like it's going to be uh, too much of a kind of juxtaposition for your followers but yeah, yeah. He, he's definitely in like great example and like inspired me with the m6 i mean yeah. there's a lot of people and everyone's like for like it's overrated for sure you don't need to pay for that like camera for sure you, you all, all all you really need is a great lens i realize you know the canon 81 is great if you just find a great lens for it you could get yeah. sharp images it's just i don't know like if you, if you all watched my previous ones, I explained it. Grandpa had a Leica and it was like, so I felt like, here we go, this, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, that's where we're at. Um, but yeah, I think it's really interesting how like, how we can build content from it and everything. And that was another thing that was uh, interesting is like how more people are switching to Twitter and leaving the Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I was having this conversation Shout out, shout out to Drew. I honestly, <laughs> shout out to Drew Evans. Amazing man. Love him. Um, He's a great guy. Really is. Love him. Uh, but like the idea of like the algorithm and I guess Twitter is better to go to. I don't know. It, I mean, have, have you seen better interactions with other film photographers on Twitter than Instagram? No, not really. But I think that's my personal experience. I, and I, feel, I try and take kind of a, uh, um, I don't know. I think that there's definitely been a big movement towards yeah. Twitter. Um, and I get it. I think Instagram frustrates a lot of people. Um, if I try not to be too, I don't know. I, I don't think Twitter's the answer necessarily, but like personally, that's just how I no. feel. Although I, I do use it. Um, but I, I personally still find that I get better interactions on on Instagram, even though my engagement has dropped off a lot, like in the last six months or so. Um, I think Twitter has its kind of merits. Like there's definitely things about it that I think like are nice, but... The way I look at it is Instagram is a visual app. It's a yeah. an image sharing platform for better or for worse. And it's got its flaws. Twitter is a, you know, it, it it's a text sharing yeah, app. Exactly. You know, it, That's the world. Yeah. And it's not necessarily made as, like, as geared towards creators. I don't think um, uh, as Instagram. And that doesn't mean that like, you shouldn't do it or you can't do it, but, you know, there, like, uh, there is something to be said for the ability you can kind of build a portfolio of work on Instagram. And I think it's harder to do that effectively on Twitter. Having said that, you can build, I think, more of your personality perhaps on Twitter because you can share images and you can share thoughts and things. Mm. Um, I think the other thing about Twitter is it's become a big space for people promoting nfts and things yeah man. which which i think that's like a whole other subject and i know it's quite controversial with some people but it, it feels like it's become like a sub a sub 
culture of yeah. Instagram. And um, yeah, I, I, I use it. I post on Twitter quite regularly now. I try and post on it every day. And I really like doing like series on Twitter. So I'll like post maybe four images that kind of work well with each right. other or, um, you know, I might like share some kind of iPhone shots that I wouldn't usually put on my Instagram. So from that point of view, it's quite freeing. I was going to say, yeah, it gives but you, I, go yeah, ahead. It give, it, no, it's just, it gives you kind of like a, it's like a clean slate and I don't feel so pressured to like keep up like appearances with just posting film and whatever. But uh, my personal thing is like, the grass isn't always greener, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I totally get it. It's a, uh, it's a different mindset, like you're saying. And I don't know, like, I just like Instagram because you, you just post whatever your photos and then that's it. And if they like it, great. If they don't, well, I don't care. Um, Twitter, Twitter, it's like the wild west back in the old days, man. Like you, you could put one thing out there and you can just get a hate storm or whatever. I haven't used Twitter since like high school mm -hmm. or whatever or even like i guess i used a little bit in college for music and stuff but it just felt weird in a way i i don't know i just wasn't I just saw so much hate going on on twitter just yeah people and i was like i don't need this energy in my life i, I just want to like see positive things i know there's stuff happening in the world but i just don't need it in my face every single moment so i think like the interactions of the way people interact with things it's quite different on twitter i think as well oh, yeah. uh, and I think it kind of invites a bit more like I've seen I don't tend to get involved in too much kind of mm -hmm. friction but I feel like I've seen way more friction between people on Twitter than on Instagram I think just oh, because yeah. you have the ability to kind of respond with words that's probably a bit yeah. easier than on, on Instagram um, yeah I, I definitely but to go back to your original point it does seem like more and more people are kind of taking up a presence on there and I, I don't know if it's here to stay or if it's just like a short term yeah. kind of thing um, the fire's gonna last or is it gonna yeah. burn down? I, I think instagram always seems to be changing i mean i've been posting photographs on instagram for i don't know seven years or something yeah, Not that's probably been been long. And, and it's always been the same thing people complaining about the algorithm or you know, why is my my posts aren't getting the same likes they used to kind of six months ago? It, it's not changed. It's always been like that. Um, and, it, you know, my experience is I have periods where I have really good engagement and I have periods where I have really bad engagement and it just seems to be cyclical. Yeah, I, I definitely, I think it's just, it's a hit or miss, you know, with your, how the algorithms are and everything. And I guess like for someone who's just, let's say, starting out they're, they're into film photography and maybe in this moment or whatever they're like this is what i want to do and if you do i hope you thrive he or she wherever you're out there or they whatever it is i hope you do well but how does one would you say grow their content because i, I like you, you follow my film account but that's like my first of all that wasn't even supposed to be a film account that was grant's fun account and then we started shooting film and then I think I have one digital picture on, on that account and it's like me graduating or whatever. Yeah. And like, but the rest is now film. The other one's music, but like yeah. for, for a music person, how they do it, it's, it's a little different how we, how we grow our content for a film photographer. For, so whoever listens to this, what is the best way for them to grow? Is it to post a day in hashtags or what? I think I can only talk about like what I've done, I guess, and what kind of worked for me. I don't know if there's, there are probably other ways to do it, but uh, th like, I think posting regularly is kind of rule one. Um, and I, I find that if I stop posting regularly or start kind of posting at different times, my engagement starts to fall away. Like when I went to the UK, mm -hmm obviously the time difference is like eight hours yeah um i found that my engagement dropped off a fair bit during that period because i just wasn't posting at the same times and i was it's all over the place um so i think trying to keep consistent post regularly try and post like consistent but trying to consistently good stuff 
like I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's worth posting for the sake of it probably like you want to kind of you want people to kind of see your best self with with what you're putting out but again if you can kind of do that every day then that's kind of the ideal scenario i think the big thing that i i think is, is engaging with people I, I just think that's kind of the most important thing and i don't know if it's a trick of the algorithm necessarily that it kind of recognizes that you use the app and you use the features in the app mm. you know or whether it's just a case of you engage with people so those people are more likely to engage with you um i don't quite know like what the relationship is there but i think being kind of a good follower can yeah. help you grow and it's not about like spamming people and like liking a hundred random photos no. um I think it's about it's about kind of commenting on people's posts for me one of my big kind of live buys is comment like responding to people that comment on my posts and you know saying thank you as much as i can and responding to messages not that i get loads but i try and kind of be gracious about it and i see people sometimes who who do complain about instagram not kind of giving them what they want but i feel like some of these people don't kind of they want it all to be one way yeah and i, and I think it is a bit of a two-way thing and whether it's kind of an automatic tech technology kind of algorithm like excluding you for being antisocial, or whether it's just the case that people learn that you are a nice person and you build these relationships and they reciprocate by liking your photo and commenting i don't know but i think it works I think, um, I think it does i think like or they're just gen z's and they're just impatient and like they just you know you gotta earn what you what you want you can't just have it right now i do think it's harder to get like I, it does seem to be getting more difficult and you know i but i've known people who over the years who like seem to get like loads of likes yeah um compared to other photographers kind of inexplicably or build a following much quicker than other photographers seem to be inexplicably. Um, I've definitely had kind of periods of really like unbel like kind of inexplicable growth, if that may be in my following. And I've had periods like a really slow growth like now where I kind of gained like, a, I think probably a thousand followers in about six months or something so um yeah i think you just got to persevere i think that that's something like you just have to keep tugging away it's it kind of becomes a second it kind of it becomes like a job you know like the amount of time you have to spend on the app to kind of build up that momentum it you, you're, you know it's like a big commitment it really is and i think like like you gotta like understand or i guess you gotta think about like what is the purpose what am i trying to do here you know like you said i think the greatest thing is like you, you say you're commenting on people's you know or they respond or anything i think like i agree and you know, on that same wave like like i just want to you know make connections you know connect with people and people who have the same interests as me and just you know learn and flourish together and as a community and like the film community it's beautiful love how everyone's so open arm and just willing to talk or meet up or you know you don't see that it, not to shit on the music community but everyone's like greedy i'm gonna keep my way of making music to myself i'm not you know there's some great musicians out there and we're, we're, we show love but i'm just saying as my experience for the last like 10 or 11 years of doing this it's you gotta you gotta find the good ones and it's hard but in the film community i feel like there's a lot of good ones yeah, and I wonder if it also comes back to there's a lot of us who don't do it. Um, we do it for the love of doing it, and maybe we're not so kind of protective over our yeah I, secrets. If I, we, I wonder you know. if Joe Greer would share his secrets. I, cause like, I don't know, know, man. You know, because at that level and like that, like sponsorships he gets and everything and all that, it's it's sometimes when you get to that level, you kind of, I'm not saying maybe he is or isn't like, but in general, people to get a big head and then it just kind of goes over them and you change. And yeah, I think photography in general, it's a it's a beautiful um, thing, how it can bring people together, especially yeah. like and I, times. And I think we're lucky where we live because it's a good group of film photographers in the yeah. Bay Area as well. Really is really 
really is like, you know, again, shout out <laughs> to Drew and shout out to you. And then, you know, uh, hopefully get like you get Eddie on here, you know, and just like a whole like, like literally the whole gang. We're just like going down the list, like because it's great to meet you all and love to shoot with you sometime. Like, yeah, for sure. 100%. It's, it, it's just a great way to meet people. And um, even even down along the line, connections in like if they're at like couch surfing you ever if I, wherever i am y'all come out and need a place always welcome at grants it's uh yeah. it's, i think it's nice i've met people through film mm -hmm. photography that i would still be friends with even if i stopped shooting film um yeah so yeah it's it's been a, it's been a really positive experience Re that's really great that's really great and i guess i mean the only other question i have um because i know it's late and everything is uh no, no. okay You're perfect. Fine. perfect perfect You're perfect fine. perfect because I, I enjoy it enjoy talking to you my guy um is would you ever or maybe you do sell um you know your photos you know great prints and like would you ever thought about like getting like a maybe do a, a dark room account or just print them on your own and try to sell it as another way to pay for the film yeah, I do. I, I definitely do. I sell prints. Um, a lot of people use Darkroom. Uh, I use Darkroom. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've, I've been using them for about, a, I guess, a couple of years, pretty much since I started. Um, you know, it's funny, I, I don't sell a lot of prints. I don't know if it's because I'm not a very good uh, very good at self promotion or good because I would, you know, you see the white walls here. It's depressing. Yeah, exactly. I would, I would hang one of your beautiful photos up yeah. here. Just, uh, you know what I think it might be is it on my one of the things. I think I sold more prints a couple of years ago than I do now, and I think one of the reasons might be is that if you go on my page, it just has a link to my website, mm -hmm. which then then you can go and to the print shop, and um, maybe it's not obvious that there's prints available. So I don't know. I, I'm not a good. I'm never going to become a millionaire from photography, partly because I'm a terrible self-promoter. Um, but yeah, it would be great to sell more prints, I think, but I just have found it quite hard going. And, um, it, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's difficult for me as well. I'm kind of um, time poor, I guess, as well, like the time to re like, go over my print shop every few weeks and out upload like different photos and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's, it's tough, but uh, yeah, I mean, at this point, any avenues I can find to kind of help fund the cost of film yeah. would be great. It, honestly, it really, yeah. If you could find a way where your job doesn't have to take some of your money that's like the goal. If you, this could be like, a, you, you know, your own shots are paying for itself. That's, that's the goal. And I think, you know, some people, maybe they just don't know, or like, I know it's right there, but like some people, like it doesn't really see it. Like I didn't realize some of like other film photographers of my of friends, like I didn't see their dark room right there until one day they like put it on the story and I clicked that link and I bought that like, because I support them. I, they inspire. And like, so I think, yeah, I think it's also just like self-promotion, you know, maybe one day be like, uploaded the thing. If you're interested, great. If not, you're, you're, you're fine. It's all yeah. good. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of, I feel like I've done that a lot, like expected loads of kind of traction and you don't get it, which is fine. Like, I'm not, I'm not like on a downer about anything like that, but it kind of, puts me off putting too much energy into promoting it because I, I don't sell a lot of prints. It's just the right, the reality. That sounds so, dep that sounds so sad and depressing, but I don't mean it to, but I'm not bothered. I, I'm not, you know, it's like, I, I could sell, I could sell 10, pr five prints and it still probably wouldn't be enough to fund photography, but it would but be nice. It's I kind of, zero. Yeah, and I kind of just want to, I, I've been through, like, I've done, I kind of just want to, in a way, just get my work into people's hands as well. Like, there's something really nice about knowing somebody owns, like, a print of your work, even if you've kind of given it to them. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm just terrible at 
kind of um i'm just not a good like self promoter we promoter just, just terrible that just like, takes time terrible. that just takes time i think i think like you know i think i feel like everything is a lesson or a lesson to be learned and you know like i mean I didn't know shit about film photography six months ago or whatever it was. And now I feel like there's some shots where I'm like, that's pretty damn good. Yeah. That's then, cool. that, then again, the lens I have on the Leica, it, it's pretty solid. I just, you know, I just look at that light meter and when I see it, we take it. Um, yeah. But I think anything's learned. I think you just have to, you know, like you said, spend time, invest into it whenever you can, of course and learn how to promote and stuff. I think that's the best way because yeah, I think especially like something about, I feel like film photography or just film in general art, having it up on your walls, it's sentimental or it's, it's, it's me. It's nice or meaningful. It's classy. I don't know versus digital in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah. I think I, I haven't got any, I won't show you the, yeah. the room. I mean, at the moment I'm looking around and we've been, for one reason or another, kind of living a fairly nomadic <laughs> lifestyle for the last couple of years. And uh, we've been in a, a living situation, which we're very grateful for, for the past six months. But uh, it means that we haven't sort of been uh, nailing yeah. pictures to the wall or anything. Um, I, I, have, I have some prints kind of ready to go. And I'm, we're, you know, in the process of kind of moving into our own place over the next couple of months. So I, I hope I'm going to get, I'm going to get some of my work on the, my own wall, even if it's not on anyone else's. Yeah. I mean, you should by all means. And also like, yeah, don't like only awarded advice, get a stud reader because the amount of times oh, yeah. I, I have missed and I had to like, then you have to crack. Then I, then I realized I'm like so off. Then I need to get paint and then I got to redo the, Get, like that's the one advice I could give. Get I I had to put a TV up and uh, yeah. How did that go? Trying to find the stud was harder than I imagined it would be. I look even looked at videos and it's they made it sound so easy, right? And I, and I, it got to the point where I was like, how? I like, come on, like how can there not be that? Like, there should be like this doesn't make any sense that there's not a a bit of wood here. It's the I I I swear I pretty sure they they planted where this wood whatever plant or whatever plate whatever it's called plank i think that's how you say it the type of wood wherever they they knew where it was ahead of time and they practiced this because i don't know it's just san francisco because this apartment i live in is like from the 1930s or whatever i don't think wood was happening or something because there is thin wood yeah the only picture i have it's like right up there of like bridget bardot um god bless her beautiful uh and that but that took forever that like everything else is like like i'm not trying to go back to posters i'm trying to like throw my art yeah, yeah. Right now, but it's like uh it's like a whole weekend project if, if i'm gonna if you're I gonna do have, it yeah and like i had this giant like mirror in the entrance and god help me i felt bad for my friends who had to hold it and i'm like reading the stud thing and they're like hurry up i can't hold this anymore i'm like i am so sorry i am like give me one more minute i'll figure this out like but now you've got if you've got a stud reader now you're you're good to go yes it's just but like sometimes it's like a, if you like lift it up it it just turns off and you have to oh. start at the end again and it's like there's points where it's like i did not move or lift off so why is it turned off so yeah. it's like, i have to keep going back to read it's a whole it's a whole thing it's a <laughs> yeah man it's a it's an interesting thing but yeah i think that's that's great to hear that you know you're, you're doing film and please promote and drop some prints because you know i'm here for it sir i'm always i appreciate I'm, it I'm, yeah I'm, I'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it just for you yeah thank you Toby. i guess the only other thing is that um what are like i guess like your goals for you know 20 yeah we're in 2022 i believe right mm -hmm. yeah yeah i don't right. i don't know i don't know why it took me a minute it's the, the covid era has like i know it's like blurred the lines between years and 2022 and or 2021 or 20 it's yeah i don't know anymore man it's just we're just trying to get through let's just get through the day right yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then have a nice beer or a tea or whatever yeah exactly fine drinking um is what are your goals and 
like hopes for film or even travels too very excited uh, like pers- personally yeah yeah any i just want to keep enjoying it i guess i don't know it's um i kind of made a conscious decision because obviously like the price increases and things and people were kind of talking about stepping away from film and I kind of made a conscious decision that I would commit to it for one more year at least um, and see. So far, I haven't shot film as much as I probably would have liked this year uh, for one reason or another, but we're only in February, so there's still plenty of time. Um, I don't know. I just want to, I feel very lucky that I live where we live it's an amazing place like visually it's it's beautiful and there's lots of other film photographers here and I want to try and find the time to connect with people and to shoot with people and um, you know last year I took a bit of a step Mm -hmm. kind of into my comfort zone in a way Um, kind of I shot a lot of what was close to me and I think this year I kind of want to maybe try and get back out there a bit more. Um, I don't know about travel. Travel still seems quite burdensome uh, it, it really, to me. But... It really is. Like, not to get off topic, but like, like the end of April, I'm like going to like, so actually um, was planning to go to Paris, but that's mm-hmm. just, that's just like a, I don't know that's just a shit show like like my my couch surfing place was not it at the moment and you know you gotta you have to get you know back from you know a COVID test after once you get there you gotta get again 24 and it's a whole mess and I guess over there they're not believing in the vaccine and all that shit so it's like the chance of getting it's a little higher so that was off topic main point is going to Milan then we're driving to the south of France and gonna be there excited to shoot some film some colors nice. all that um but like you said that that point of like is it worth traveling like even though you gotta get all these covid tests and stuff and like all these like papers and everything and like yeah it is but it's kind of tiring and then the worst part of all it's like you get covid while you're there yeah then you're stuck and then more money you have to stay somewhere like if you're already on a tight budget, I don't know if this is the move. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, it feels like kind of a risky endeavor to go abroad, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's safe. I feel like it's probably fine. Yeah. Um, whereabouts in the south of France are you going? Uh, I'm going to so so there there was a lot of places, but I think in Saint Tropez. Uh, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. So. Uh, I don't know. It's just very, just peaceful and slow. And also Bridget Bardot lives there. So I'm like, Oh, you might bump into her. I, I, hopefully. I mean, like she's not what she is like from 1960, but I, that does not matter to me. Age does not, I am here for it. I am here to meet her. I was thinking of bringing that with me. You and, should. And just, definitely, see, you know, 100%. Sign um, yeah. but like France is so, it's so beautiful there. And it's so, I don't know, like I was, and I still was thinking like, maybe I should go to Paris because like just going there and, you know, shooting all around and all the museums and like, mm-hmm. like weird fact, Jim Morrison's grave is there and yep. love the doors and like, I'm here for it. I don't know if it'd be, you no, know, it definitely would be worth shooting a shot of uh, Jim Morrison's grave site. That is hundred percent worth it in my book. Like that is, bless his soul, that man. Um, <laughs> I mean, Paris is amazing, but the that area around Saint-Tropez is nice. I know it well and Okay, you have, great, you have a great time there. Would you say like so? You know, I'm I'm fine asking this. You're like like. Would you say there's other? Because like how how like I'm there for a week. Just gonna go there. Like can I feel like you could see that city within a two days? I mean, would you say there's uh, Saint Tropez or Paris? Uh, Saint Tropez. Saint Tropez like, is pretty small. Um, so would you say go out more to see with with a week? I guess. Yeah, if you had a week in that area, you'd want a car probably. And um, I've not been for a, quite a while, but I used to spend a lot of time as a kid nice. uh, down there. And the traffic sucks, I think, from what I remember. Oh, but, uh, oh beautiful. There's not many roads. There's like one road that kind of, there's not many like roads that feed the towns. And it's quite a popular, if you're going like in holiday, in like vacation time, it's very popular. So 
you know, be prepared. If you want to go to the beach or something, be prepared to sit in traffic is what I'd say. Ooh, yeah, I don't know if like the last week of April, I don't know. If that's I think like, it'd be fine. You know? I think April will be okay. Weather I will be pretty be, good, but... Hopefully, yeah. San Tropez is like a town. It's not very big. I don't think you'd need more than a couple of days there. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, we're going to go and then I have a friend who like lives two hours away or something mm-hmm. like in the hills. So... I don't know what's that's going to happen if I see her or she's coming down, whatever. I'm just excited, you know, going, love, like going, traveling. Only thing that I'm afraid, and this is just being Grant as myself, I won't have like service because, you know, unless I have one of those orange cards, if I so replace it, and I know I'm going to get lost or some shit and I'm going to be like going somewhere else. I'm going to run out of gas and then I'm just going to be that guy with his thumb in the air, yeah, hoping right. someone stops i mean you know the weather will be nice so you can walk or you can walk you know that's that's something actually which i love about film photography it makes you go out and like because sometimes i just want to stay inside and make music but you know with film it makes you go out it gets kind of out of your comfort zone and uh so if the car breaks down or something i'll just start walking yeah with film camera. exactly you got your camera and everything you're good and life is good exactly and take a picture and then maybe get it printed and then the scrapbook someday my kids or whatever like why did you take a picture here well whatever the kid's name is i decided that time i got stuck yeah this is the time my car broke down and uh, i hitchhiked but those are the best memories those are the best memories yeah like oh they are like they are ones you'll live with a hundred percent and the people you meet that you don't know that's why i think like about europe is so it just i just it gives me like butterflies like just thinking of europe because one you can travel to any country you don't need this like stop a passport like here in america when you go to canada or mexico or i guess anywhere it's like it's just free you can go to these places and you know it's easy you get to meet people i mean assuming that they're friendly you 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 could figure out the, the crowd whatever who's like whatever out there and just like i don't know and then seeing the elderly people and they're in the cafes and they're smoking i'm not i'm not promoting cigarettes but at the same time like i feel like when you're there you just kind of go with it <laughs> and, I, and I, I know i will probably do that I'm not promoting it people i'm just saying it's gonna happen it's gonna happen and i'll have my coffee or whatever and read a book or whatever the you know, like indulge in the lifestyle yeah i want i want the midnight in paris experience but down yeah. in south of france down in south of france france. midnight that's in the south midnight in the south of france oh my god we're making a movie out here already <laughs> you're already know <laughs> man yeah so it should be good i'm excited to, and and film supply I haven't shot any of the film so we are solid here and not so now i have all this supply of film ready for this trip so that's the beauty perfect i'm very jealous of you oh, okay I'm that, that was that, jealous, that's that's not my friend if you could go i would i'll come. come i might come with you i might i might book a ticket you know what you get eddie get drew get the whole gang out the here. whole team let's the get whole, the band back together get the band like the beatles man and just like we get a like a place that's the beauty about it getting a group of people airbnbs mm-hmm. that's the best way to do it doing it solo it's a little bit hard. I have to stay yeah. in someone's house with them and don't know who they are. Yeah, I, I think we're going to make some memories, me and this family. I think you are. You're going to be, you'll be best friends by the end. Firm friends. It, exactly, man. It, exactly. Um, yeah, there's so much. There's, that's, I, could, I already thought of another topic. Like if you've seen Get Back Together, I don't know if you are a Beatles fan, but great documentary. I haven't seen that. Is that the new one? The new that's the new uh, one on Disney Plus. It's on Disney, isn't it? Yeah, that, I, I kind of I'm not a big Beatles fan, but I was kind of curious about that. But we well, don't have Disney Plus. So. I mean, yeah, definitely. See, you know what? I'm going to ask because you know this. I'm curious. Like, for for for, I'm not going to say every British person is a Beatles or Rolling Stone or Kinks or whatever you want to say fan, but like the majority of the music there is it like? I mean, I don't know, like. Would you say that type of music was, you know, promoted a lot? I'm just curious of the like, like just bringing music in for people who do watch the podcast. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I kind of grew up in a certain era. So bands like in the 90s, like Oasis and Blur. Okay, okay. Yeah, really, yeah. Really, 
like huge then and like you know but i suppose like the like bands like the beatles and the rolling stones are so they kind of transcend don't they and like you kind of i'm not a huge beatles fan i'm not a huge rolling stones fan like at all yeah but i still know them i know, you know the members you know, of, uh, of them yeah you heard yeah them. And i know members of the band i know a, like some of their songs like, like the beatles i know a lot of their songs even though i'm not a fan so yeah. um I feel like they're just kind of part of British culture almost. They're, they're almost not, they're almost more than, it's almost more than music. Yeah, I feel um, like it's probably like in your history, like you go through history and like the Beatles started on this day in Liverpool, man. Yeah, and I, you know, I think, I don't know so much for like Gen Z and stuff now because I mean, like the Beatles are like 60 years old for some yeah. of these kids, but that when I was growing up, they were like 30, 30 years old or something. Um, felt a little more like maybe a little more contemporary but even then they still seem like an old yeah no, band but I, I don't yeah uh, I don't know Oasis is great like like when you said that like I knew it was something 90s I feel like like that's a great era Oasis fun fact fun fact in uh, Guitar Center you cannot play Wonderwall they will not let you because that is a well-known song that people play and I guess the people at Guitar Center they are just fed up of hearing yeah i think (laughs) when i used to play guitar at school i think that was one of the songs that i learned how to play so i kind of sympathize with yeah it's like Um, that song or house of the rising sun or there's other yeah they're just like you cannot play this yeah like get some new chords yeah but it's it's a great like oasis actually there is a documentary came out 2019 on netflix definitely definitely recommend it their story amazing like how they've been yeah if you ever get to see it watch it all right <laughs> yeah i it's funny because i think now uh when i was kind of growing up oasis were kind of a new band i'm not that old but you know like no you you know it, the music i listened to the 90s in the, in like the mid 90s they were like a contemporary band and you know like now there are kids like the uh, the oasis almost are equivalent to the Beatles to like yeah. me when I was growing up if that makes sense like 30 years ago um makes does that does make me feel quite quite old actually but but like that's the thing like that like I love every era of music but the 90s is like what I've been listening to like Dave Matthews band mm-hmm. I had the shirt on earlier today Counting Crows Mazzy Stars Sonic Youth um you know he said Oasis um Blur you know like like these like were the um, bands that are like what I grew up from my dad because you know mm-hmm. from wherever the night you know that era that's what you listen to college years and it's like yeah all that rock and roll was great and don't get me wrong there's some good R&B's 90s artists and I'm really trying to think who else uh Amy Whitehouse I think was the 90s I, I think I don't know I could be off on that one so I think she was a bit later like uh like early 2000s yeah I, I think guess. that's I think that's what, yeah, I think there, I think uh, Blues Travelers, I think was the 90s. I don't know if you know that. Group. I haven't heard of them. You stumped me on that one. Okay, yeah, check out, they're called, there's, they have a song called Hook, pretty good. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I could be here all night with figuring out songs, but yeah, man, they're just beautiful songs. I love it. There's something about that, the 90s era, the grunge era, where it's like, you didn't care. Like, you're just doing you. It's kind of like a rebellion kind of a phase, which I just like, I don't know. I, I love it. And it's, it's just, such a unique sound, I feel like, as well. Like, oh, yeah. For that era. 100%. 100, 100%. Um, yeah, man. That, that, I, think, I think we got everything. It was always great, you know, lovely to talk to you, Toby. Thank you oh, so much. It's been much great. For Thank you. Thanks for having me do this. It's, I've been looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, it was good to talk to you. Good to, like, yeah, like meet you in person, kind of in person, virtually. In Finally, person. We'll, we'll we'll meet up and shoot sometime. Like, oh, I, for sure, yeah, hundred no, percent, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, thank you so much for being on here. Um, we'll have to. I want to do like one with like because on Zoom you can get a group. Just get oh a yeah, that'd be fun. The, you know, just like get first everyone one on one on here, and then afterwards get the whole group. Um, and it's just like just talk, you know, because that's just great. Everyone's just in there, and they just. Yeah, that's and then you also I just I think the beautiful thing of Grantastic of this podcast is that sometimes 
you might connect with someone who you didn't know about and then you guys could flourish and have your own conversations and because there's some photographers out there like um like i said jaime you know he his his um instagram is kome yama i think that's what it is but everyone should go check him out great photographer and then another one uh her name i had her on here kim but she goes by burka or burku uh amazing from berlin and then the one before you carly who i had on uh she lives in uh, paris in france great photographer all these people so i just want everyone and we had we had drew too so just want everyone to connect with yeah one. let's do it let's do a group it'll be chaos but i look forward to it it would be great you know everyone goes to europe and shoot that is the goal everyone we're all going to europe to shoot <laughs> sounds perfect to me great well thank you so much for being on grantastic and i hope everyone has a good one yeah thank you thanks very much thank you so much Toby. yeah